Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome, I am here to talk about why your gut health matters. My name is Tanya, mindful eating and health coach, dental hygienist who works where the gut starts, in the mouth. The gut matters, it drives everything. Our mood, nutrient absorption, weight, even though I don't focus on weight loss in my health coaching practice, the global conversation with women, especially as we age, is about weight. We can't escape it. But it also drives immunity, your B vitamins, serotonin is made in your gut, and that's affecting your mood. So it really does drive everything, even your skin. And if you aren't taking care of your gums, you're not helping your gut. But today I'm going to talk about gut health in terms of a non-food way, okay? Like we always talk about food, fiber, fiber, fiber. Yes, you should eat fiber when you're helping your gut, but we always talk about what to eat to support our gut. And I'm not telling you to go run out and do a detox or go and do a gut program. You certainly can, but you can take care of your gut in four ways that really don't involve food. But here's a little nerd trivia for you. Did you actually know? I just looked this up. Gastrointestinal supplements, so like probiotics, these sales have reached 2.96 billion in 2018, and they're projected by the Nutrition Business Journal to reach 3.98 billion in sales by 2021. So that says a lot about the health of our collective guts or what we believe about the health of our collective guts. We really also wanna buy things that help our health and help our gut. There's nothing wrong with that. I buy things that help my health, but can we do this for free? Can we do this for free? We all wanna buy things to quickly and easily get to a better health status. And don't get me wrong, I do cycles of probiotics and I feed myself prebiotic food in the form of fiber and resistant starch. But there's more to gut health than capsules and kale, okay? So over in my home, we aren't just interested in our own microbiome. My daughter works in a health food store and so we're interested in our pet's microbiome as well. It's fascinating stuff, but okay. On, 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 let's go to four easy and free tips to finally help your gut, okay? Stress, reframe your stress, I know. We're all stressed out, we live in modern society, there's always gonna be something. Always gonna be something, whether it's happy stress, a wedding, yet something, a new car, a new home, a new job, but there's, there's a bit of stress, we can't avoid it. Our bodies react to the notifications on our phone, um, bad news, even bad days, and too many to-dos on our list. The response from our body is that it thinks a tiger is chasing us. That's sort of the classic fight or flight visual, right? A tiger's chasing us, iPhone, oh, tiger's chasing me, you know what I mean? So this affects our digestion because when we are stressed, the brain is going to stop proper digestion. We are what we absorb. We're not just what we eat. It's what our gut can take in. So let's face it. When we are relaxed, we enjoy our food and the company that we keep more. It makes sense, right? The last time you had dinner with your loved one or your girlfriends and you were like not in that space, right? You were thinking about the pile of work you had left at the office or all the crap you have to face when you get home or even what's happening next week or even the stuff in your life when you're not present, you are more stressed. You probably didn't enjoy that outing, that meal, that get together, at least not at first, until you calm down and let go a little bit of that stress, right? So one way you can reframe your stress is to decipher, like take note. What can you control? And you can even write this down on um, a sheet of paper. What's in my control today and what isn't? Because a lot of things that we stress about, and I know it, are things that are not in our control, right? And stress affects so much in our bodies, whether it's nutrient absorption or bone density. And we need to keep our bones dense in menopause and postmenopause. You're building your premenal bone health for when these hormones change, right? So you got to watch that. At least I think so. <laughs> so when something threatens you, breathe. That's actually the next tip. And try to think of it in a different tone. Look for the lesson in what's happening to you. We need to look. I like to I've changed, you know, I used to be a very big victim. Woe is me, I can't change that. Many things have happened in my life where I was a total victim. But I started to listen and understand that maybe there was a message in the stress. So try to find some support. Tell yourself that maybe this is temporary. What, what you're telling yourself will 
really inform the state of mind that you're in or the state of body that you're in. Change your surroundings, put on some music. Stress will affect your sleep, your hormones, your happiness and your well-being. You can't get away from it, but we can try and look at it in a different light. <sighs> the next tip is breathing. Breathe, and these are things, breathe. Mindfulness, mindful eating, breathing is part of it. Using breathing techniques will help your gut health. It calms your nervous system and it lets you get into a rest and digest mode. This activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So we want to move from fight or flight to rest and digest. And it is a part of mindful eating, taking a breath at the table. If you've downloaded my mindful mini, my mindful eating mini series, you would have worked on the breath. It's a wonderful part of practice and it helps us be in the now we talked about being present with our girlfriends over dinner so we can you know bitch and moan about the day or about our spouses or whatever but now we're present with our food instead of mindlessly gobbling and that's going to affect your digestion so breathing techniques mindful meditation even for a few minutes just even a few minutes may help increase your self-regulation and your self-regulation muscle around food. So in this mini series I created, I give you some tools to help you reframe that all or nothing mentality. And I share a breathing exercise that is simple. And that is honestly the springboard that got me onto calming my nervous system to help me digest and absorb. The next one is kind of funny. I'm a dental hygienist, remember? So optimize your spit. Your spit is so important. Does this sound a little wonky to you? I know, but it's not, I assure you it's not wonky. Optimizing your spit, your salivary flow is really important because as we age, our saliva glands decrease in function. When you go to bed, they decrease in function. Your body wants to rest. So we need these glands through the daytime to pump out spit. There's salivary enzymes in there. This is where di digestion starts. It's in our mouth. Remember I said the mouth is the beginning of our gut. So when we pause, when we use mindful eating and pause before we eat and take in the smells and sight of our food, we'll notice. We don't just go right to eat. You're going to notice. Saliva starts to flow. Your brain is getting prepared. It's, it's engaged. It's ready to eat. And your digestion is getting ready to do the job for you. So pausing before your meal and taking in your meal, the smells, even the sights, will get your spit flowing and this makes it easier to swallow and that's important too. Now the next tip is about chewing properly and slowing the eating and that you really need saliva to really work there. So eat slow and although I've said before that mindful eating is more than just slow eating, slowness is a component of the practice and it's really really important and I catch myself all the time with fast eating. It's been ingrained in me for so many years. And so it's okay. The trick is to catch yourself when you're doing it. So when we slow down and when we actually chew, we gulp less air. And this can lead to less discomfort, bloating, and yeah, the toots, right? When we have a full dentition, we can also chew. Whether we replace the dentition with implants, dentures, whatever you can work with, when you have teeth, you can grind your food and help your digestion. But yes, bloating, passing gas, farting, whatever you want to call it, whatever has the toddler funnies, you know, it can be embarrassing, but it's also physically uncomfortable and socially awkward. Okay. Let's say it. It's socially awkward. Chewing properly is part of tasting your food. It's part of tasting your food. We pulverize it. So all these nutrients can be released. We can start to break that fiber down. We actually truly taste what we're eating and we can be more satisfied. And that's another component of mindful eating. When you taste what you're eating, you can be more satisfied. So isn't that what life's all about? Especially at this age, when you're 50 plus, you want to be satisfied with your life. You want to be satisfied in menopause. This can be a stressful time for many of us. Sandwich sandwiched between kids, career, care of parents. We deserve, no, you deserve to take care of yourself, your gut, and your happiness because it's your turn, okay? So if you're ready to make it your turn, come and join my conscious community, my conscious eating group, Mind Me Food, over on Facebook, the link is below, and you can even contact me for a 30-minute mindful eating call. I'd be happy to chat with you. And other than that, optimize your spit, so important, and that will come in another video. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching.